and we are live. All right, welcome to the uh, June the uh, sixth. Uh, welcome to June the sixth uh, uh, Council of Aging meeting. So we're going to call the meeting to order, and it's now two o five. Did everybody read the uh, minutes from the last meeting? Mm -hmm. And do we have any questions on the minutes of the last meeting? Any discussions? All right. Motion to accept. And do we have a second on that? I second. Okay, thank you. Second by Paul. All right. First right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Before we go on, uh, Mr. Chair, if I might, um, if you'll indulge me, maybe back up a little bit. We have a couple new uh, members here, associate members, uh, that have joined us, and we're so grateful that they could be here today and be part of the ongoing progress of the Council on Aging. So I'd like to introduce Tracy Hutchinson. She's the Executive Director of GAMMA. Uh, in Garden, Massachusetts, an organization that has a long history, proud history of serving residents throughout our area. GAM has been a great partner to us um, as it relates to transportation and work and, and uh, housing and substance use programs for our seniors and our community. Tracy, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're also joined by former Mayor Dan Kelly. Dan has been a strong, loud, and staunch advocate for programs for seniors. Um, has been very supportive of the Senior Center, especially as of late. He is one of our guest uh, dignitaries in our programs here, both in the, the bread and pastry raffle and bingo, and has been a sounding board for a lot of the initiatives that we have going on. Dan, thank you for joining us. He looks excited. <laughs> um, and just uh, for you all to know, I think I mentioned it earlier, uh, um, that all our meetings are video recorded and uploaded for transparency to the city's YouTube page. Anybody who's interested can get a full uh, viewing of, of all of our proceedings. That being said, I apologize for being late today. Um, we have a program going on upstairs. It's about 30 seniors involved in our, uh, our elder law for, for the Gardner community, so I, I apologize. All right, that being said, uh, Mr. Chair, we're going to the Treasury. Yes, okay, uh, Treasury report, please. Okay, the Treasury report, as of May 31, uh, incidentally, Mike has already included the material in your packet, so I'm just reading you from the uh, general the, uh, uh, synopsis page. In the operating account, we have a balance of 25000 zero. 20 79 cents. Now that has to last us till June 30, and a couple of the accounts have negative balances, but uh, Mike will have all those straightened out, and we will have enough money to get us through to June 30 without asking. As I hope all of you know, the fiscal year, our fiscal year is from July 1 to June 30, so we have to be in good shape on June 30. Right, Michael? Yeah, if I might just make a comment on that. Um, two areas that, that we saw very significant changes in the actual amount versus the budget amounts include the salaries uh, item. The salaries items are generally the, the salaries are adjusted after the beginning of the year, so way before our budget, uh, way after rather, our budget is submitted. So the numbers that you see, especially in salaries, don't reflect in, in extraordinary or or strange uh, amount of, of salaries. They are compensatory to what we expected, just not what we budgeted last year because we can't budget it until it's been negotiated. So um, those will all have a supplemental budget and then the items that also um, show a negative balance will just do line item changes within the Council on Aging budget to, to make those um, all flush out. So it'll be a very small supplemental budget that the city will have to afford us to meet the salaries uh, part of it. And that's all outlined on the second page of the budget report. And the next item on the budget report is the gift fund. 
and we have a, a balance of $52,670.48. It lists an expense of $44.95, but that is not really an expense to the gift account. It was a reclassification, it was a classification error at City Hall. And it has been reclassified and it is now where it belongs over in the uh, in the um, general budget. Revolving fund. In yep. the revolving fund. And the revolving fund is in good shape. That's page uh, two uh, of your report. And we have thirty two thousand one hundred and five dollars and eighty three cents in there. And listed are all the things that we have spent money on during the year. And this this uh, account will be carried forward into the next year. We don't have to liquidate or balance out any of that. But we will start off with every, whatever the budget, whatever the uh, remaining balance is, that's what we will start it and all these red marks will disappear. And last but not least is our grant account. And, uh, and we Presently, our balance in that account is $29,814.51. And on the last page of the budget report, everything that has been spent during the year is listed. If you have uh, questions on any one of those items, Mike can answer. And he also would be, have to be the one that would have all the backup information on his computer. So we are in good shape. And we await next year's, well, we await our final report. And then next year's budget. All right. I think it's really important to, um, for especially for our new members on the, the board, associate members, that they understand the city operating account covers all of the operational, non programmatic expenses here at the senior center, but do not include some of the, what might, one might consider standard costs. So rent, um, I don't know, water and sewer charges, things like that. Those are all just uh, absorbed by the city and don't even show up in our budget anywhere. The gift fund is a special designated account um, to receive and spend for special purposes money here at the senior center. So when somebody does a gift in memory of, um, in memorial of, then it goes into the gift account and the board is the only uh, authority that uh, can allow for expenditures from that account, which explains Terry's explanation of that $44.95 having to be shifted out of the gift account, um, it was inappropriately classified. The revolving fund is our kind of flow in, flow out account. It's our, it's our uh, wash account. So what we do is we spend money, but then we take money in. And for example, uh, some programs that might be a good example of that are our um, our St. Patrick's lunch. There are expenses, but people pay for their tickets. Our, our summer outing, our cookout that's coming out. Um, our veterans uh, trip the other day. So there may be more expenses than we take in income. We always try to do that. We don't always uh, do dollar for dollar uh, income versus expenditures, but pretty close. There is a cap on the revolving fund, legislatively set by, I'm sorry, by ordinance set by the city council. We have exceeded the cap, the balance that's allowed in that account, um, but the city council and the mayor have both uh, offered their support in for a short period increasing the maximum allow, amount to be allowed in that account. So that's going to be um, a short term simple solution to that, but we're spending it down as much as we can. In this state account, every council on aging in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts gets an appropriation, a uh, per capita appropriation for seniors in their community to operate their senior programs. Some communities, by the way, operate extensively on the um, in, in solely on the money they get from this the state grant. We're lucky that we have several different funds that we're able to do more programs as a result and pay for more things as a result. <clears throat> the state grant used to be very onerous. Post COVID, they've become much more um, understanding of the dynamics in a senior center. So we have more um, more areas we can spend. <coughs> Excuse me. There's less uh, reporting requirements, um, kind of strict reporting requirements. So we have a lot more flexibility in how we use that money. Last year, <coughs> I apologize. Last year we did not spend the entire amount, and the state allowed us the rollover. That's not generally the case. They are allowing the rollover again this year, but I think we can anticipate next year and years following they won't allow 
balances to be rolled over. They'll take those back by way of reducing the annual allocation for the coming year. That's just a quick explanation. <coughs> Any questions on the finance report? Okay, so we accept the finance report. Can we have a show of hands? We get a motion. A motion? I make a motion to accept it. Yes, sir. Yeah, we do. No, I thought we did this. Why did we do? Part? Yeah, motion to motion to accept. <coughs> yeah. As presented. Yeah, accept yes, as so. presented. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so voted. Okay, our next thing on our list today is the election of uh, officer, vice chairman. Um, so just by way of update, uh, last month the mayor approved the recommendation from the board and the chair uh, to appoint Paul Leone as a permanent member of the board. Um, it went to the city council, which referred to the appointments committee, and approved uh, sent to the full council with recommendation to approve, the full council approved. So last month, Paul became an official member of the board, appointed member of the board. Those are, there are two distinctions that we can, um, we can elaborate on in a little bit, but um, there are seven appointed members, he's our seventh. Uh, as, as such, he's now eligible to be considered as an officer, only uh, folks that are appointed by the board are allowed to serve as officers. Any discussion on that, on the motion? If not, we accept. If can we have a, a show of hands? All in favor? All in favor? Any opposed? Any opposed? Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. And just like you that. You may accept this, you know that. And just like that, your name is on the uh, signage. Well, Thank you. And it's that is an efficient secretary right there, I tell you. <laughs> no kidding. Thank you. So welcome on board. Don't get sick. <laughs> Just don't go on vacation either. <laughs> Paul, um, if I might, Mr. Chairman, DV yes. again, congratulations. Sure. Uh, for those of you who don't know, our new vice chair celebrated his birthday yesterday. So on behalf of the staff, and those around, I'd like to just give you this card and wish you Sorry. happy birthday Thank you, and sir. congratulations. Oh, God. I also was my anniversary. Oh, wow. Oh. Next oh. month, another card. <laughs> Next month, another card. Thank you. All right. So now we go to the uh, old business. It's all of us. It's all of us? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so we have any updates on business on, from the new business or from prior May 10th, and the first one up is on the COVID-19 update. So um, I think I reported last month we saw a, a little uptick in the number of people that had been participating in senior center programs who <coughs> had reported to us they tested uh, positive after um, participating in an event, but not necessarily related to. As is our policy, we did an all-call uh, as part of our contact tracing, let folks know that participated in those programs with that particular senior, um, that somebody who attended their program had tested positive, and to call us if they uh, experienced any symptoms or they test positive. We received no um, subsequent calls or notifications, which is a good thing. Uh, so right now, I think we should still temper our response and um, you know, not necessarily enact any new policies. Let's kind of wait uh, over the summer. If something should happen, if we see significant changes in the COVID rates or experiences here at the center, then I will let you know I will do a temporary uh, policy change until we can endorse it or, um, or approve it by the board. So our next board meeting is September. That may change as well. Uh, there may be some reason for us to meet during the summer, and if that's the case, and there's a, an issue about COVID, we'll address it then. But right now, we're status quo. Uh, we just had a COVID uh, clinic. 
Yes, we did. So uh, our previous <laughs> clinics were, were amazingly successful. We had a number of uh, many, many hundreds of people attend. We did a, a COVID clinic in March, which changed the landscape dramatically. We had 14 people attend. Um, and that had been what has been happening in the community, that these community COVID clinics are being held and not a lot of people are attending. So when we decided to do the one on June 1st, um, we did a full court press. We asked a lot of our partners, our healthcare partners, and organization partners to join with us in promoting it. As a result, uh, we maxed out at 170, I think it was 167 to be exact, folks, um, with a half schedule. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could have doubled that, but it was a very well-run uh, clinic. We're, it's old hat to us now, so the staff was able to really put it together. What makes our clinics, um, folks, is the participation of volunteers we have. Extraordinary people who just know what they're doing. So uh, our staff put together the logistical side of it. We, um, we do the registration and things like that, but the volunteers run it. From registration to parking to observation, they do a remarkable job. So on behalf of the Council on Aging, I want to express our sincere appreciation once again for the heavy lift of the volunteers that make things possible for our community, for our seniors, and for our senior center. And there are a number of you here today. Um, thank you. Thank you for taking the time for doing that. You made it easy and effortless. Uh, and so far, all we've gotten is, is great reviews and compliments. So that's, that's because of you. So thank you. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, sir. And the next thing on our list is the bylaws. And I noticed that we uh, were waiting for an answer from the uh, city charter in order uh, to find out how we were going to go about this. Yeah, there's been no response. Um, not that they don't care, um, but it's end of the year, and it's difficult during the end of the year to kind of get these kind of uh, you know, very involved questions answered. So they are working on it. They have promised me a response, but right now we have no update on the bylaws. People in, I guess, for the suburbs, starting in at the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. There's no urgency. Do we have input on the bylaws that we want, or do they decide? So, Ken, it's a great question. Um, so, just to remind folks of the process, the organization has bylaws. The Council on Aging has their own bylaws. But those bylaws cannot be inconsistent with city ordinance or city charter. So, our request to the city um, clerk and to the mayor's office is strictly can we get a copy of can you tell us what's in the charter so we know what the parameters are as we look to change the bylaws now why is that important well our bylaws for example set two seats two appointed seats aside for folks that are representing aarp and golden age those are designated seats and those organizations elect or select the representative from their respective organizations to serve on the Council on Aging. If we were to change that, which we are able to do, if we're so inclined, and I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, and we remove it from the bylaws, the city charter may require that representation. So changing that from the bylaws would then conflict directly with the city charter. So we want to make sure that whatever we do, if we make recommendations to change our bylaws, we will make similar recommendations to change the charter or ordinance that go along with that so that they're not in conflict and we're not in violation of any city uh, policy, procedure, or uh, code. Does that make sense? Okay. Typical. Sounds very confusing with the law. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay, our next thing on the list is uh, trade resources. We were trying to see if we get some trace people uh, to uh, give us some information and have their cards and whatever on the, on the board now. Do you have a board that's theirs? I think we took the trade resources off, uh, Chairman Dameka, but I'm very willing and able to continue to explore. So we did a pretty aggressive outreach to try to get uh, folks that were in the trades, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, uh, to provide their information to us so that we can have that resource available to seniors that are looking to have work done. The fact is, as we reported last month and months before, is all of these folks are very busy. 
I had a gentleman today come in and inquire about, for example, a wraparound porch. And we made a couple calls to contractors we knew. And the answer was, it's at least two, if not three years out. Um, that's the current uh, climate we're in. So it's, and when I called Monty Tech, they kind of said the same thing, that they're not really hurting for work or referrals. Um, they will talk to some of their alum and see, but we haven't heard anything back. So I would say that we kind of put this off maybe to the fall and start a re um, kind of exploration of how we can can create um, you know some interest in that referral process. Very good. Next thing on our list is the listing session. Wait, that's on the list. Oh, no, no. Oh. The next thing on our list is the listing session. We've had three here at the senior center. Uh, First one was fairly well attended, and the last one was fairly well attended. Uh, got some good ideas uh, for, for things going on. People had brought up some uh, good ideas for what they'd like to see for activities. And uh, also, the uh, when we were there talking, but it was the uh, we were talking about different kind of groups and whatever. It just happened that uh, uh, I thought maybe a couple would be good for uh, Gloria when she has her. Uh, uh, we'll go to the H Club because I thought maybe more people would probably come to that too. So we'll see what happens with that. Ron, uh, can you explain what the listening session is? Ah, listening session. We were trying to get some people who, who would not come up to talk in the senior center up above the stairs or whatever. So what we were looking for is having people coming in uh, to give ideas, suggestions of what they'd like to see done at the senior center, uh, any ideas of uh, changes. Uh, and stuff like that would give some input. That's what we're kind of looking for. Because some, some people don't really know what's going on, and other people would say, well, how come we don't do this group or that group or this activity or that activity? So this is what we were looking for, some input from the public. And similarly, um, you know, we do our programs here. Generally, we're pretty responsive to people who give us ideas here. But the fact is, we still don't touch nearly the vast majority of seniors in our community. So the Senior Center is a building that is operated by the Council on Aging, but it could and should be only one facet of the programs and outreach we do to seniors. There could be ways to bring programming outside of the Senior Center and services outside of the Senior Center to those that aren't engaged here, that don't want to come to the building. So in addition to the listening sessions we had here, we were waiting to hear um, for the Bonal House and the Gardner Housing Authority to open their facilities back up post-COVID. They both have, and they are now allowing us to come in. So we'll have new, new uh, listening sessions scheduled in July and August in those locations just to hear from those folks about you know, what they need and how can the Senior Center and the Council on Aging meet those needs. And Ron's been heading those up. He's been chairing those, doing a great job. Thank you, Chairman. Thank Taylor. you. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, do we have to do anything on the associate members? That, that's all taken care of. All done? Yes, we can get that. Okay. So okay. now we're up to open discussion. No, we did some stretching. I'm looking for my dog, but it's a long paper. Uh, okay, uh, new business and start off with the director's report. I'm going to make this. Quick, which I know is going to shock some of you. Um, luckily, Dan, other folks um, who are so overwhelmed that I'll make this short. We do have a, you know, medical bag upstairs. I don't want to overwhelm you with this, but a lot. There's just a lot, a lot, a lot going on uh, today. We have legal considerations next Monday. We have our flag day and veterans recognition next Wednesday. We have our AARP annual meeting. We have Golden Ages this Wednesday. Um, with our speaker Ann Yeagle from uh, Growing Places. Our partnership with Growing Places has resulted in six uh, hydroponic gardens coming here to the center. So uh, part of that acquisition is getting six grow lights to go with the, the, uh, the gardens which are being shipped as we speak. So we'll be rip roaring ready to go and probably be able to kick off our hydroponic gardening program July 1, if all goes well. Uh, in July, we have our summer outing cookout. Last year, we served over 200 people. We expect a sellout crowd again this year. On uh, August 17th, we have our Woosocks game. 
on August 20th, a shredding event. On September 7th, AARP driver education. Uh, and in between that time, just a ton of other regular and special scheduled programs coming up. So please, our uh, communication program has been really the most important aspect of getting the word out. So we do email, I'm sorry, we do printed newsletters, we do emailed newsletters, we do robocalls, um, we do posters throughout the city and here at the Senior Center and at our partner locations like the Housing Authority and the Banal House, who I want to just say are exceptional. I talk about them all the time, but our partnerships are what makes you know, our program so robust. Um, and I like to shout out to people who give a lot, and they are city departments, they are our colleagues, but they do an extraordinary lift for us. Uh, Gardner DPW, Lines and Signs Department, the IT department here in the city, uh, city purchasing department really has been a great resource for us to get uh, at good you know, cost, at good amounts, supplies and things we need for the center. So all those people take a lot of extraordinary time out of their day to help us uh, do those things. So that's, I really appreciate all that they do. We had a job fair, it went very well. The litmus test on that was as long as you have more participants than you do vendors, it's a success. And we had about twice as many participants as we had done. So that was a, a really good thing. We started a monthly drug take back program. Um, just, just a lot going on. And again, we talk about everything that happens here, but none of what we do, none of what we do would be possible without the support and help of our volunteers. So I want to make sure that, that you all know as board members that every day we're recruiting to get people to help cover in the office or help in our programs. Um, those special programs, we are uh, volunteer, just, you know, intense. So we need a lot of folks for those. Uh, but in addition, there are other volunteer opportunities that we've been asked to help. And one of those is Haywood Hospital. They're looking for assistance there big time for their, um, their volunteer program to help transport and move patients around in a climate that is not necessarily um, you know, great right now. So they need folks that can help these patients get to their, uh, their appointments and to their service areas. So if you're watching this or for members of the board, if you know someone who's, who needs to get out, and we all need to get out. So if you're looking for something to do, two great opportunities. The Gardner Senior Center and Haywood Hospital. And I think that's it. I think that's all we're going to do. Oh, no, I'm going to talk about the Vet-to-Vet -vet program. So we brought, our vet to vet we brought 40 veterans. Yeah, there's a couple of vans. Three vans um, to the American Heritage Museum. I want to thank Beacon Hospice, uh, the We Honor Veterans Program, the uh, Veterans Preservation Project for helping to coordinate that. Our own uh, chairman of our veterans group here, Allison Shalapatis, who does a great job. And we talk about community partnerships all the time. You know, for our St. Patrick's Day lunch, we had to go to, to uh, satellite parking areas. And in order to move people from satellite parking areas, because we simply don't have enough space here, to move those seniors from having to walk a quarter mile, um, we enlisted the help of a transportation service in town. Oh, and by the way, when we did the American Heritage Museum, we used three vans to transport 40 people uh, to Hudson, Massachusetts that day for a remarkable day, a remarkable program, unbelievable um, presentation. And Dan, I think you were there with us as well. Um, and we enlisted the services of a transportation agency. And you know who that was? It's our own new associate member um, representing that organization, Gamma. And we're so grateful for all that you do to help our seniors. Your organization has been remarkable. I could talk about the, the Kyle Dahl House and what they've done for our seniors who are homeless and suffering or struggling with recovery issues um, and, and all the rest that you do. So thank you very much for coming to our aid um, in providing those transportation services. We appreciate it. You're welcome and thank you. All right, now I'm done. No, you're done. Uh, did you want to talk about what's coming up on Friday? Well, oh, good programs coming up on Friday. Actually, next week's going to be a great program. So we have this, the next two weeks. So we started, we kicked off on June 1st, we kicked off the COVID clinic, had a, just a, a seamlessly, effortlessly, problem-free clinic. Um, today we have the legal uh, considerations for seniors. On Wednesday, again, we talked about the Golden Age meeting with Ann Eagle, uh, which has had a great participation. 
Next Monday is our Veterans uh, Recognition and Flag Day Ceremony. Last year we had about 50 people attend. We, we recognized 22 veterans, 18 of which, 17 of which were in attendance on um, that day. So we were able to talk about their experience, the service that they represented, their, their uh, military specification or, or classification. Um, it was a neat program. Senator Cronin was our guest speaker. Senator Cronin is a Captain Combat Veteran of the U.S. Army. This year, um, in a kind of big way, we have a uh, big name coming in. Uh, we have a Brigadier General, Brigadier General Paul Smith, Paul Glenn Smith, um, who was the commander of the U.S. Uh, of the Massachusetts National Guard for many years. Um, uh, General Smith will be our speaker at the Flag Day ceremony. We invite and encourage you all, if you are interested, to please come. Please share and like that information. Our social media hits have really been what's getting the word out to the community, so let the community know. Um, we'll have some refreshments after. It'll be, it'll be a very nice program. And once again, we are honored to have the American Legion Post 139? 129. Oh, so that was only 10. 129. Uh, from Gardner, Mass. VR, I'm a member, yeah. Oh, I can't remember my own birthday. Um, VR Honor Guard, so thank you uh, to the American Legion and all that they do to support our senior center. Then on the 15th, we have the AARP uh, annual meeting. I think we have a little over 70 people signed up. Um, our our um, speaker is the the Massachusetts State Director for AARP, which is a big, that's a, another big deal. We're very, um, very lucky to get him as our speaker. So a good, good number of, of pretty exciting programs coming up leading into the summer. And on September 1, we start all over again, which is, you know, pretty nice. Very well. Great. All right, now we're going to go to open discussion. <laughs> You have to help okay, people. Um, we haven't heard much about um, research for outreach for the How's that going? Is it? Yeah, it's not going well. Um, so what we were able to do, we we were able to create last year. The, the city personnel committee approved our request to create a part-time um, kind of caseworker, social worker type uh, person that could help usher through some of these more in-depth intense um, issues that our seniors are facing, specifically when somebody's Medicare changes and all of a sudden they don't have coverage, or there's a housing issue, a nutrition issue, or elder abuse issue. Right now our staff do that, um, and I can tell you this, this year was pretty remarkable in the sense of need and demand for housing, nutrition, medical, and transportation. Um, housing alone, we had about 13 seniors who were displaced and homeless. And by homeless, I'm not talking about living with their kids on the couch. I'm talking living in tents in the woods, living in houses with no heat, no electricity, no water, um, very living in their vans, very substantial and serious um, conditions that, that are intolerable to think of, but even worse to have to live through. Um, finding emergency housing was very difficult um, and was particularly time consuming. One particular senior we worked with, we applied to 18 different housing uh, complexes for them. And each application, you can imagine, takes a significant amount of time. So um, this outreach person would do that. The one failure in the outreach, it's not really a failure, the one challenge we have is the outreach uh, coordinator position as set by city salary is $15 an hour. And it's not attractive to somebody who's working, for example, but somebody who might be not working, who's retired, and it wouldn't affect, say, their disability or Social Security or something like that, would be perfect. We had a wonderful work, woman working for us. She was a caseworker for 25 years with Monitors and Home Care Corps. She came to work for us. Um, has been in, in workforce for about four months and then left. Um, she's been very engaged in the, the senior center, still involved. She left because of a family need um, to take care of her grandchildren, uh, who, because of COVID, their caregiver became no longer available to, to care for them. So that was, I think, the right call, the right priority, but it's been difficult getting somebody in. 
we did make some headway and we're hoping to be able to make an offer, but I don't think it'll be before July 1st. We do have some additional part-time staff, you know, very small hours, to make sure we have coverage during uh, vacation times. Uh, I try not to have, I try not to be away when Nancy's away, and I try not to have Nancy away when I'm away. Um, we're a little bit more fluid with Rob in that, you know, the, as long as Nancy and I are here, we can, we can do the general, very superficial maintenance stuff, move tables, set up rooms, but a lot of the cleaning and heavy lifting doesn't get done until our facilities person is here. We operate on a very lean staff. I mean, we have three staff members that manage the whole building, the, the shoveling, the salting, the, you know, heating systems, so um, all the program and administrative work. So I, I'm pretty proud of them. I think they do a great job. I, I love coming to work, I'll just say that. I say it, I say it every time, but I think that, that recognition needs to be made. Affirmation is important, and they do a super job. They're great with our seniors, and they're good at what they do. So it's nice to have that competency um, that you can rely on. <laughs> and a shout out to your volunteers. Let's go back to the volunteers. Oh, I love my volunteers. Oh. And you know, I was worried that you know, maybe the senior population that was here wouldn't be uh, in, interested. It's exactly the opposite. We have you know folks that are asking us to do things, which I'm so appreciative of. Very good. So, anything else that anybody wants to bring up for open discussion? Everything seems to be going well. Probably have some new ideas. Hold the. Kelsey at Sapphire Park. Um, she ain't come back to you? She's not. Do you want to Please do. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, the question is whether or not we ever heard from Sapphire Park on, um, we're making an inquiry to them to see whether or not they would allow us to put a box, a distribution box up for our newsletters. And all of the other housing complexes, we have one. Bernal House, Blanchard Street, Heritage Village, um, the high rise, we're able to put our newsletters and probably 50 outlets across the city. Um, but Sapphire doesn't really have a place, so we want to put a little structure up. Right. Yeah. They have the mail station. Um, if you're not familiar with the Sapphire Park, um, right currently now we put our newsletter in a cardboard box on top of the mailboxes. <coughs> what happens is, is that the newsletter, if it's windy, it's an open air pavilion, and they fly all over the place. And, or not that, those weekly flies you get in the mail, you know, for price of the chopper and so forth, people don't, they just say, oh, chunk, and they just throw it in that box. So it's either a trash barrel or it's all over the mat, all over the ground. So we're asking to put um, a document holder against one of the walls so that we, they can, you know, people can grab it and use like, rather than use the box. Yeah, not a heavy lift, it's just, no. I think once they hear what we're asking, they're not going to say no, but it's just a matter of getting them on the phone and ask. Well, we'll see what happens between now and uh, September. We've got to put someone to work on it. I'll put a call on it. Paul. I'll take it next week, you kidding? <laughs> that box better be up next week. You got it. You're ready for it, right? All right? Yeah. Yeah, you we have the box. Yep. All right. Okay. I'll call it today. <laughs> and then one, one last thing about um, volunteers. We're, we're always looking for volunteers for the organizations here, so our Vet to Vet Cafe, our caregiver support group, um, but two in particular organizations that are really doing a lot of stuff in the center and in the community are Golden Agers. They're always looking for people to help with their programs. And AARP, um, if, you're not a, if you're not a member of either, please consider joining. They're, it's low cost. I mean, it's definitely not a budget breaker. And it gives you access to the programs and services of those organizations. All right. Anything else on open discussion? Right. And I guess we're finished for today. Our next date, our scheduled meeting, will be on Monday, September the 12th, uh, which is going to be the second Monday of the month through the holiday on Monday of Labor Day. So we'll be meeting again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And as usual, we don't need to have a meeting in July and August unless it's an emergency that we have to have a few of us in here. So that will be it. So we won't see you until after Labor Day. And please watch your email because we may have a special meet, a short special meeting in July or August.
All right. Well, we thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second. Okay. All in favor. All right. Thank you. <laughs>